Hey Canucks fans, the Vancouver Canucks have defeated the Montreal Canadiens 2-1 in Montreal, snapping their four-game losing streak. Here's what I liked, here's what I didn't like, and here is one other thing. Before I start, you might be wondering, Clay, where are you recording from today? Well, thank you for asking. I'm actually at my wife Gail's old house, the house that she grew up in, the house that I she was living in when I met her back in 1989. Her mom still lives here along with one of her brothers and, and his family. So yes, we are here celebrating a birthday party and I am here in Gail's old bedroom recording this vlog. I better stop right there. Okay, here's what I liked. I liked the play of Thatcher Demko. 33 saves on 34 shots. And back to the Demko that we've come to know and love. I think he would kind of I don't say he lost his way, but he struggled a little bit. Like the whole team was struggling throughout the last few weeks. But I thought tonight he looked really good. The only shot to beat him, it was really no chance. It was a, a nice centering pass um, to Poleg for for Montreal. But um, but overall, Demko played a really strong game. And again, that was the only goal he let in. And he came up big when he needed to, especially in the third period. Also like the game of Connor Garland. Didn't have a lot of ice time tonight. It was weird. The, the ice time was really slanted towards the, the more defensive type of players um, because their, their connects were protecting a lead for basically uh, the entire third period. And, well, not basically, the, the entire third period. And so Con Connor Garland didn't get the ice time maybe that he, we wanted him to, but still in his 13 or 14 minutes of ice time, or maybe it's a bit more than that, so effective, scores the game-winning goal and had five shots on net. So uh, Garland, always noticeable. And uh, yeah, that, that game winning goal, actually, that second goal for the Canucks was really good. Nice centering pass from Horvath. Actually, kind of similar to Montreal's goal. Actually, a centering pass from the corner, and then Garland puts it past Jake Allen. So I like, um, I like Connor Garland's game as well. Uh, Tyler Myers, you know, sometimes he gets a lot of flack. Sometimes he, he isn't the most uh, traditional player. He's a little bit unorthodox in his style, the way he kind of stretches out all the time on his belly. But today, Interesting stat, he had seven block shots. I would dare say there are some players that might not even get seven block shots in an entire season, let alone one game. So Tyler Myers doing the kind of things that you need to do to win to win a game, to gut out a game. Seven block shots for Tyler Myers. Very, very impressive. Also, I like the play of our special teams. We went one for two on our power play with that nice pass from Hughes to Petey. Petey rips that one-timer in. That was the first goal of the game. So not only did the Canucks go one for two in the power play, but they kill off both Montreal penalties. So not a lot of penalties called, only two man advantages for each team, but the Canucks go 50% in the power play, they go 100% on the penalty kill. That's a CCSCS, Clay's cumulative special team stat of 150%. Obviously, that is a good night for the special teams. And overall, I like the way the Canucks play. They, uh, they are disciplined, they, especially the way they started the first 10 minutes. They kind of let off after they scored their first goal, but I really like the, the, the way they came out, and they ended up getting 42 shots on net, I think. So another plus 40 um, shot, shot game for, for the Vancouver Canucks. So they were hungry. You could tell they wanted to win. And yes, I realized that the team they just beat was one of only three teams that had a lower low points percentage than the Canucks. It was Montreal, Arizona, and Ottawa, and we get two of those three teams. So we beat Montreal, and now we get to play Ottawa on Wednesday. So a lot of things that I liked. Anything I didn't like? Maybe the only thing, and I'm nitpicking here in a 2-1 victory. Again, not against the strongest team in the world. But uh, Tucker Pullman's been really struggling. And I've mentioned him a couple times in the past couple weeks. But today, the only goal, and I get it, I get it's magnified. Everyone makes mistakes. And if they don't lead to goals, maybe I don't talk about them. But the Pullman one, it was such a bad error because... There was no pressure on him, and he makes a pass out of his zone. It goes off of Horvat's skate, and then Montreal turns it and goes the other way. And there was actually Horvat's guy who, who ended up tipping the puck in in, in Poleg. But, uh, you know, Pullman's got to make a better play there. Either put it on Horvat's stick on the tape or put it up the boards, but you can't have it go off of Horvat's skate and have it going the other way. And again, I get there's always turnovers, there's always giveaways. In fact, the game-winning goal was because of a horrible giveaway by Josh Anderson of the Montreal Canadiens. So I get that these happen a lot during the game, but they're magnified when your team is struggling and when, when that's the one mistake that leads to the only goal that you give up. So, But I'm, I'm really nitpicking. Uh, I'm not going to complain too much in a 2-1 victory for the Canucks. Uh, one other thing, I'll say two other things here. One other thing, 
Petey, again, 13 minutes of ice time, but this was a very efficient 13 minutes. He was strong, he was noticeable, he was assertive. And the reason why he only gets 13 minutes is when the Canucks are protecting the lead for the entire third period and Travis Green shink, uh, shrinks his bench down to nine forwards instead of 12, guess what? Petey's not one of the, those nine. It's Petey, Pod Colson, and it's Dowling that are sitting. So throughout a lot of the third period, Travis Green cycled through three lines. It was Miller with Besser and Hoglander, then it was Horvat, Pearson, Garland, and then a, a combined third and fourth line of Mott, Chason, and and Dickinson. So that means Pod Colson, Petey, and Dowling, that entire third line. Actually, now that I think about it, that was the entire third line because the fourth line was Dickinson, Mott, and Chason. So really the third line didn't get to play a lot in the entire third period. That's why Pod Colson only had 10 and a half minutes of ice time. That's why Dowling didn't have that much. And that's why Petey only had 13 minutes. But if Petey is a true team player, he would understand why. And he, it's not like he's been the most effective player so far. And it was great to see him get his goal on the power play. So we'll see if this is a bit of a, a resurgence for him. The other thing, so it's two other things, is I'm not saying the Canucks have turned around their season based on one win. Maybe it's simply delayed a few changes for a, a few days. But the Canucks have a chance to actually make up some ground in the standings. They have Ottawa on Wednesday. And then they play 10 of their next 14 games at home. Now, it's not easy opponents, but at least they're at home, including a six-game homestand, of which I'm going to four of those six games. And that starts this Saturday night by hosting Pittsburgh. So again, they got Ottawa, and they have 10 of the next 14 after that at home. So including the Ottawa game, 10 of 15 games in December are at home. So if there's any chance for the Canucks to make up any ground in the standings and at least get closer to 500 somehow, they got to win these games at home. So put in the comment section below what you liked, what you didn't like, and one other thing. And I'm going to be drawing uh, for a prize. I'm not going to do it this Wednesday. I'm going to wait till Sunday. Sunday is going to be a massive live stream. I'll talk about it later in the week. But I'm going to be giving away not only a $50 gift certificate to the van base, but also a pair of Canucks tickets to the Canucks and Bruins on Wednesday, December the 8th. So make sure you plan to join me for my live stream on Sunday. Um, but I got one on Wednesday before that. Also, Canucks After Dark, me and Parker at 10 p.m. tonight. Hope you join me, join us for that. And thanks for the great feedback to my, my new series called Week at a Glance. We'll be doing that every Monday morning for your viewing pleasure. Looking back at the week and looking at the week. And if you watched it, you'll know that I, I didn't get the score right, but I correctly predicted a Canucks win over Montreal tonight. So let me know in the comments below, what did you like? What didn't you like? And tell me one other thing. Shout out to my hero members, Next Strand number 29, Just Incredible, Lucas Gates and Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, Carol Bovenlander, and HSM Fangirl Gaming. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, we're growing, we're at 52 members, which is awesome. Hit the join button underneath this video or underneath any of my videos or in the, go to my memberships tab in my YouTube channel. Okay, friends, subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Leave a comment down below if you like to. Become a member of this channel if you like to. Comment what'd you like, what didn't you like, and tell me one other thing. I'll see you later on tonight, 10 p.m. Parker and me, Canucks After Dark. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great night. God bless, and go Canucks, go.